your life. A very good evening to one and all. Thank you for your patience and sorry for the delay due to some technical error. Posted by the Department of Architecture, MIT, Aurangabad. With a legacy of 35 years, our department has successfully upgraded and earned a creditable name in the field of education. We have our graduates, alumni, spread all over the world, showcasing their excellence and outstanding performance, making a difference everywhere. Currently, the department is successfully running BArch, MArch, Urban Design, and BVOC interior design courses. We try to keep our students abreast with the latest trends and technologies, at the same time, empowering them to become better professionals and human beings. Mosaic 2020, a techno-cultural event hosted annually by the department, conducts activities like expert talks, workshops, competitions, alumni meet, and many cultural activities. This year also, we had scheduled this event in the last week of March. But going with the saying, the good work shall never stop. We are glad to have an extended participation to our event this year. The lockdown gave us an opportunity to pause, introspect, and move on. Welcome to the first session of Mosaic 2020 webinar series, Renaissance Architectural Voyage Post-Catastrophe by architect Ajay Kulkarni. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce today's speaker, architect Ajay Kulkarni, professor, MIT Aurangabad, an architect, designer, photographer, artist, calligrapher, product designer, conservationist, and convener in TAC Aurangabad chapter, and proprietor of the firm Interface Designers Aurangabad. Architect Ajay Kulkarni, a graduate from VRC Nagpur, completed his master's in visual communication from IDC IIT Pawai. Bhushan, architect B.V. Doshi at his studio, Sangat in Ahmedabad, before starting his flourishing practice in Aurangabad. He has, to his credit, a number of prestigious projects like Dr. Babasab Ambedkar Technological University Campus, 13th cycle of Aga Khan Award for Architecture, and the 6th cycle of Word Architecture. Other notable and award-winning projects include Vastad Lauji Salve Health Center, Golden Jubilee School, Arya Chanakya Vidyadham, Department of Aeronautical Engineering at IIT Pawai, Design of the National Salt Satyagraha Memorial at Dandi, and the list is endless and goes on. He has written many documentaries, writings, film, on various subjects. He is invited for talks and as a jury member, a number of schools of architecture and design. He has presented many seminars at. He is going to share his thoughts on the journey of architecture in the current generation and beyond. Before I hand over the mic to Sir, I have a few points to add. If you have any questions during the comments box, we will bring them up after the presentation and have a question answer session with you. And without further delay, to Ajay Kulkarni, sir. Thank you. Thank, thanks a lot, my dear madam, for that uh, introduction. It's, it's really wonderful to interact with the design community. While the world on one hand is passing through this, uh, this critical stage, 
it's always uh, history has proved that with this kind of uh, aesthetic state of existence a lot of good things have emerged they they emerge everywhere so last 7 weeks of this solitude i would call it a an enrichment because you are talking to yourself this rare opportunity all of us being in the design community wish to always we always search for this solitude and god has suddenly showered us with a huge volume of solitude whatever you've been wanting to do so far i think this opportunity we should not miss this in a sense for creative people because i am a extremely hopeful positive person irrespective of any situation may it be described as positive or negative whatever categories that situation would be i would always my focus is primarily on creative instinct that it would give rise to because history has severely proved this and not only in architecture in several walks of life this solitude in a sense my own house my own house i designed it's i almost feel my house like a queen's chamber i recall my visit to the queen's chamber you know you have pure cube and you are there with yourself nobody else i think that's uh, really amazing exploration to oneself architects designers especially architects when we deal with the space we are neither taught we do not anticipate a prolonged encounter with the space either it's designed for us or it's designed for our clients so this is one of the uh, unique opportunities i don't miss this opportunity to evaluate what course you have given to your clients and what information in the records you are going to get post this solitude this abeyance would be really wonderful to experiment that itself is going to teach us a lot of things i think let's not miss on that it's time to investigate we have been taught in the schools we have read in the books architecture is mother of all arts architecture is a frozen music architecture is a reflection of society let's take a pause and evaluate all those things probably we can talk to yourself to oneself and evaluate these things and uh, the significance of these things in our day to day practice and believe me friends this is though this is a this is a hiatus this is a abrupt interruption in our uh respective voyages that we all set to this is an un- un- unexpected turmoil that has come but believe me don't look at this turmoil like the common man will do i'm very sure i'm talking to a extremely visually literate community they won't do this i'm pretty sure but it's i'm very excited when i'm talking to you as you i'm still because of this last 47 days of solitude i'm still talking to myself so pardon me if i'm i'm uh, i'm i'm extending my limits encroaching into your realm of creative perceptions so so pardon me for that so what i was talking to is this solitude this abrupt interruption is not an ordinary one this is a quantum leap once we get back to our so called normals this is also normal let's explore whether this bears as a normal or it doesn't so once we get back to our normal selves i am sure we will be more energized we will get more energy and we will find ourselves into a different orbit so this is a quantum leap i think explore that we are all going to uh we are all going to uh derive something wonderful hopeful creative constructive out of all this process now uh this catastrophe that we are all passing through has brought the whole world closer this for the first time in the, in our history 
So whenever we use that this is the first time in the history this pandemic has come, post my presentation, you will not use that word because I'm going to take you to a larger perspective, which we all must really know. So this catastrophe has brought the entire world closer. How? Because our problems are the same, our expectations are the same, anxieties are the same. The speed at which we expect the solution to come is all the same. Everyone is focused. So probably it's for the first time that the entire globe, irrespective of our time zones, our cultural beliefs, our religious beliefs, we are all attacking the same problem. This is going to give us a great deal of insight into the way we will look at world henceforth. I think let's uh, not miss this. And this, having said this, the formal, since we are talking on the platform of a school, School of Architecture, Department of Architecture, MIT, I must say here that we will have to be proteins. We will have to be an animal who changes his characteristics and morphology depending upon the situation. We will have to adopt that skill. And I'm sure we will do that. We will teach our students how to be proteins, how to change, how to respond to sudden change in life cycles. In order to teach them, we will have to learn ourselves. If we learn, we will teach them, we'll again learn. So this cycle is going to, this cycle is going to be really, uh, really interesting. So, I'll come to this. Uh, so we've been talking about uh, the reason I've titled this whole talk as Renaissance. It's Renaissance primarily. It's a it's a rather chosen word by the art community to rebirth. I think this is going to be rebirth. In order to have a rebirth, is it essential to die? I don't think so. In a given life, we can be blessed with so many deaths and so many rebirths. And this is one such occasion that we are going to be reborn and we have to really get into this new realm. Architecture is an eternal voyage from eternity to eternity. It's an uninterrupted journey. This whole voyage, it's been, it's, it's far beyond and far before. It, human mind started documenting it. Despite several catastrophes, this history is continuing, this voyage is continuing. It has seen several storms. It has, and these catastrophes in the past has given wonderful opportunities to be reborn, to reappear in a new avatar. I think that's extremely, extremely important to learn from this because again, needless to, uh, though I am tempted, needless to remind, I'm talking to, not to self alone, but also talking to a large, visually sensitive community. Architectural voyage is filled with thousands of adventures. We all know. History has proved this with fantasies, wonderful stories, with fictions. And these fictions and fantasies, though they are on the fence of reality, the moment they fall on this side of that invisible thin line, become a history become a great work of architecture, become a great work of music, become a great work of sculpture and, and a literature. So I think this is very important to note. So my dear friends, we are in a hyper state of creativity. Please make yourself realize every day in the morning, every moment of this 24 hours, 
no one is going to interfere in your wonderful journey of explorations so exploit every moment exploit every moment you may write you may paint you may uh, talk to yourself you may write poems so on and so forth the aim of this this uh, monologue and occasionally a dialogue for this next 50 minutes is actually to establish a point of view this point of view is going to establish to in this world of social distancing i want to distance from myself and look at myself from a distance a safe distance i am not sure whether the distance can be measured in terms of man made measurements of 200 mm or not that only the time is going to prove but i am going to have a safe distance in order to perceive myself on a larger perspective believe me my friends after this post this catastrophe in a very metaphorical sense i'm using this word because i've already reminded you in this voyage of architectural journey it has witnessed so many catastrophes so this is one such positive catastrophe so in this catastrophe a lot of excited people are going to find themselves in a huge spike of creativity so this spike of creativity graphically would be expressed no less than the graphs that you see on your television monitors if you are watching television wasting your time in watching television so you can see that parabola with an apex so your creative parabola is no less than that so that creative apex would be at its peak the moment you are released free of this interruption and that curve will get slowly flattened over few decades and only the core values will remain in your in your palm a handful core values and they will prove to be sufficient for you to continue your voyage okay so that's the that's that's the pulse that's the potential that's the spirit that's the power of this moment let's remind this to ourselves i also sense that this entire world is now divided into pro virtual and anti pro virtual there is world which is going to say oh don't worry you want to sit in your homes sit in remote places and do your work but believe me there is another lot of citizens human beings which belongs to that other mass like me i am very scared of this virtual world i want to be in the real world i want to meet all of you have a beautiful cup of coffee meet over probably a samosa or a pizza whatever is your choice and have heart to heart talk so i am waiting for that kind of a not pro virtual world knowing pretty well virtual world is going to be there this metaphor of rebirth is not new is like i told you it's been traveling since eternity to eternity so don't ever mistake by saying again oh this is once in a lifetime once in a lifetime of those who are born in last century but egyptian people have already told us in our history lectures that they their time scale is not limited to one century it's centuries 5000 centuries and that small belief that's belief that fiction if you want to call it that fairy tale if you want to call it has resulted into a masterpiece of architecture whether it's indus valley civilization or it is egyptian civilization and we are witnessing even today so never dare to call it a fiction so this perception of time beyond the century is not a fiction architects are not allowed to call it a fiction it's a reality so we've been we've been 
we been we will be responsible to do something in this century which would be witnessed by several centuries to come and that's the concept of rebirth orisis is their god green color body their vehicle as it comes to the belief of egyptians their vehicle is the same body after death okay so they're going to ride on the same body mummified and will be reborn to come and stay in this wonderful world of palaces for the kings in the abu simbel palace in the khufu pyramid and in the queen's chamber buddhism has a different perspective on this rebirth what they say this is a cycle keep on coming appearing and disappearing this is known as sansara as long as you are attached to this the desires you will keep coming but lord buddha has not promised to come back in a form of a pharaoh but he says you may come in a different form he himself appeared in different forms he came in a form of a kapi he came in the form of a vajra he came in form several forms we all know a lot of that Greek people, we all know that Plato believed he was Socrates in his 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 prior life. So Attis is the god of rebirth. So what I'm trying to pinpoint here is that we are today reborn. Okay, so this is no more a philosophical religious. belief you may be reborn severally in one life so this abeyance of last 47 days is just a small demonstration given by god to really witness to experience to that divine community of architects what egyptians orisis meant what lord buddha meant and what it is meant So are we clear? Are we are students of architecture? Needless to mention. So I think it's for that divine vision of all the students, like this great person as Saint Corbusier, associate rebirth, as he was reborn several in his life. He is reborn. He calls it a pause. So aren't aren't we experiencing that pause for last seven wonderful weeks? if this pause gives birth to a master of the century so we are so many people today talking hundreds of people having this monologue and the dialogue will be reborn as masters why not this is not a fiction because i told you fictions are no more fictions they are realities so talking in terms of indian philosophy it's a space it's a space in between these two words it's a space which we know as akash so it's your choice how you want to reframe your new orbit because you already quantum leaped so your new leap is going to give you this wonderful excitement we not very old few decades let's come to terms with time if centuries is too much too big a scale to measure come to terms with few decades one tenth of a century few decades back a simple art of writing was so glorified in india this is your legacy you were born like this when did you die in this form and you be you are reborn the way you are because you do not recognize this you have renounced this when where and why have you disappeared from this life so do you want to take time since no one is going to call you no one is going to interrupt interrupt you 
So do you want, do you have some time, by the way, now, since last 47 days, and we don't know how many more enriched moments are assigned to us. So if you are prepared to dedicate some moments, investigate where this wonderful way of enlightening the light has disappeared. So please investigate. You will come out with something wonderful. Renaissance is actually art movement where the old classical concept, the Vitruvian philosophy was recalled. They thought after 15 centuries, oh my God, it's enough. Let's, let's go back to our earlier life. Let's revisit the scale 15 units, 15 centuries and find out, can you awaken yourself? This moment of awakening is this moment of awakening, these 47 days. So they discovered, they excavated the, the mummies, the graveyards, and they found out, oh, there are wonderful, wonderful proportions. Can they be brought to your life? Can those Vitruvian principles of five orders of architecture be rewritten? Yes, they would be rewritten. Andrea Palladio he rewrote them in four books of architecture after 15 centuries. So the lamp that I was showing you was only four decades, five decades. Please remember, dear friends, if something can be reinstated 15 centuries old in a form of a renaissance, a fantastic movement which has given rights and given birth to Vinci's, oh my God, Andrea Palladio's, oh my God, what a glorified moment that must be. So do not hesitate. So ponder to yourself. Do not hesitate to go back and find out. This Corbusier's image of modeler. What is Corbusier trying to show? It's, is it a self-distance or is it a self, social distance? I think it's a self-distance. He's trying to tell you distance from yourself and explore. Keep safe distance. There is a thin line between fantasy and adventure and it will give rise to wonderful architecture. So let's take a pause, my dear friends. Revisit this need to reset more relevant past that we have left somewhere. Go and find out all your archives. You will find it. You will find out. Don't worry. You will find out because now you got a divine vision through last 47 days. Let's try to find out if ecology which is abundant in India and abroad, can it be recalled? Do you want to hold hand of the ecology? The wonderful artisans who are dying hand to mouth. Do you want to bring them to mainstream architecture formally? Do you want to appoint them as faculties of architecture? Head of the department, artisans, when we come back, I think it's time to think. Let's think of that. I think this metaphysical and physical artistic content, our existence has been somehow pushed away by so-called proud technology. Be aware this virtual world in a sense is very dangerous. So I am fortunately not the one who believes in that. So I want to have a cup of tea with you after this. I want to ensure that that non-virtual world still exists and get inspiration from all of you. So last few centuries, nothing was recorded in the books of the history. Last six centuries were blank pages. Do you, one of you who's having a monologue in the dialogue today, want to write a book, three books on architecture, because five books were written by Vitruvian, four by Palladio. Do you want to go to the next level? Three books of architecture on this catastrophe. Or do you want to be reborn? Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, 
was reborn as Mahatma after he met Tagore. Tagore gave him this wonderful terminology of Mahatma. So this is what the, we, we can be reborn in any form. Okay, so do not hesitate. Now, these terminologies are extremely popular. I flatten the curve, use masks, keep social distance. Oh, it's a pandemic. It's not an epidemic anymore. It has, it has got the entire globe. What is the death count? How many patients? Someone is quarantined. Someone needs to be quarantined. Oh, the whole world is waiting for the vaccine. Oh, it's on the way. It would come. Oh, South, some, some South Korea or some Korea has got a second wave, so on and so forth. These, these visual, this and visual noise and the noise otherwise, this noise of sound is bombarding all of us. So I don't watch TV. But my dear friends, these terms are not today's. I am not talking about these terms as they are talked today. These are from 1665 plague. Same terms existed then, 400 years back. Even that time, in a span of two months, the curve rose up like this. The world witnessed it the curve to flatten. 20% of the population of London was wiped out. <coughs> the, the term quarantine was coined 400 years back. The, <coughs> the masks were used, the distance, etc., etc. All those things were <coughs> used once before. So never ever call again this for the first time. It's <coughs> it was once before too. So so this the history of pandemic is uh, the history of architecture like we start from from the Nile civilization, Indus Valley civilization, go back 5000 years back. And so is the history of these pandemics. 430 BC, two thirds of the population was wiped out pandemic. There was smallpox, there was plague, 50 million people dead. There was black death. You know, this black death was very fearful. 50 million people. 12 ships on Sicily where were parked and was to the surprise of the people that all passengers in those 12 ships were found dead because they were carrying a pandemic which was spreading through clothes. So they, despite maintaining social distance, this happened. So 14th century London plague, it appeared 300 times, 300 waves. Cholera remained for, the London cholera remained for 70 years. So Spanish flu, as we now listen, 1918, is 50 million people were wiped out. Asian flu, HIV AIDS, these things we have known. 2003 is the latest, where it was caused by bats. It was found in China. 26 centuries were affected. It used to have fever. It had respiratory problems. So this was in the very recent past. And while the world was having an encounter with this deadly disease, look at this hopeful, warm, yellow words. Parallelly, Greek classical, Byzantine, French Gothic, Renaissance, Baroque, Neoclassical, Art Nova, Gaudi, Art Deco, and Postmodernism. And modernism was also flourishing despite these critical times. So, this is my message today. This is my point I want to share with all my dear friends. Don't blame anything to this critical condition. It may you rise to one such yellow words. Look at these yellow words, not at the white words. So please, so this is uh, 
this is what that dangerous disease twelve ships came to Sicily and so on and so forth. People thought that it was a punishment, a divine punishment given by the God against too much of greed of human mind, blasphemy, heresy. So, you know, as a matter of coincidence, few weeks back, even I thought this pandemic is a result of too much of greed, agony, wrath, prolonged desire for destruction. So I was praying the, the Lord who gulped that halal. So this situation, if it's a health issue, so all that poison, he would gulp it and store it in his uh, neck and save the world. So I think uh, these two slides are, are quite similar. So this was, this was in 1347, 700 years back. And this is 700 years after. So Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi reborn as Mahatma. So it's time to reborn like a Mahatma. Look at the Mahatma's grip. Really intentionally, I have put this image. Mahatma is holding his, his support system with a great deal of firmness. His thumb is pointing upwards. So I think this is the time. Mahatma with a different commitment is the need of the time. So it's uh, unexpected, I know. This has resulted to huge human life. Of course, I know that. Death is too scary when seen from such a close distance. I think the term Renaissance and the rebirth makes more sense when the world is witnessing this brush, this bruise with the death. I think it's too scary. And once they have passed through this, they are reborn. Of course, yes, they are reborn. So we have, it's time to to while we are doing a lot of research on Mars, I think there's a lot of work needs to be done on this planet as well. So post this catastrophe, when we meet, this voyage would also prompt us to explore this planet along with the planet Mars. How we can survive on this when we are designing houses for Mars? Is it time to redesign our houses? on this planet Earth, I think. Are we living in the world of illusions? I think. Do we, are we used to that normal of illusions? I think. So I think realities are different. So I think let's distance ourselves, relook at ourselves, our existence of illusion, and say hello to reality and revisit, be reborn in order to explore something. So uh, that there is no, there is a possibility that in future, the life may be snatched without your notice. You may be asked to restart. You may be asked to be reformatted, reloaded, talking in terms of visual, this virtual world. You want to reinstall yourself. The cause could be a microscopic, dead, small, little mass of inanimate protein which enters your existence and damages you. So I think be careful. Nature is supreme. Obviously, we all know that. So we will have to have a new roadmap for our new life. Our, we will have to scale our life in a different way. Not this century but few centuries behind and few centuries forthcoming. That should be our, let's redefine, because I've already told you that you are quantum leaped. Your energies are different. Your responsibilities are different. So your scale is going to be different. So your vision is going to be different. So that's very important. So let's, let's not miss this wonderful opportunity. We are apparently ignorant of so many things we thought 
we know a lot of things. We science knows a lot of things, but there are while we know a lot of things, there are so many things that are not known. I am not calling them unknown, but they are not known. So let's explore on this planet to in search of that not known things. So and please do not wait, waste time for this crisis to end. It may, it may not. Get back to your introspective, reborn states, respective states, and get on to your work of creativity. Do not waste time. Okay. So this crisis is not going to end. Try to live with this crisis. Medically, it may be term. On some date, it has ended. It may appear reappear even 300 times like the play appear so don't wait for this strengthen yourself be positive and in case it really appears take that as your rebirth and do something wonderful and go to the next quantum there are because nature has already proven and told us that there are some permanent things this particular castle, great piece of architecture has seen so many pandemics. It has had encounter with so many pandemics. Isn't this divine? This is protected by divinity for a divine, divine pandemic. So let's, let's try and get this strength in this 47 days and Maybe next 47 or whatever number of deaths. Don't count them. Okay. So that's very important. This is very close to that earlier slide. This is remaining for last 2000 years. This is proven, my dear friends. This is already proven. This is also a curve. It's a horseshoe curve. So the curve parabola means something else in our lives. It's not that flattening curve always if there's something else. So these, these two slides are same. So let's look at this. This is no different. This is a result of rebirth. Belief in rebirth. This is game number 16. Result of a rebirth. Built for the gods and goddesses. For Lord Shiva. This is the great Kailash Parvat, mountain Parvat, Kailash. So this is what this is what is divine. This is divine. So is this is divine. Is this, is this divinity different than that divinity sculpture, that beautiful sculpture that I showed you just few slides back? It is not. This comes in your perceptive formally taught architecture that probably comes in your invisible infrared situation. But now you have this divine vision. You can see that also. Okay. So this is the history of art. So this history of art has proved already wonderful, wonderful array. So while I was proud to show you that is your pandemic. I'm very proud to show this visually literate community this wonderful, oh my God, this prehistory, ancient, medieval, then uh, Indus Valley, Rome, then this great Gupta period work, Egypt on one side. What a marvelous Achipsu temple. So, so much disciplined. Wow, this is Gothic center, Sophie on one side. And this is Notre Dame. Wow, this is fantastic examples. So these are all, when we look at the scale of those pandemics chronologically, this is what people like you have already created. But when, only when they were reborn, not in their normal state. So please be reborn. You will be recorded like this in that 
three books of architecture oh wow renesa the fantastic period this is actually economically not a very good period if you look at it political turmoil but vinci michelangelo rafael villa rotonda wow these are masterpieces timeless beautiful works okay so this is what we will have to see villa rotonda this is what we have to see then baroque is all dramatic things this is where the photography probably must have emerged with this wonderful wonderful work this is a little rhetorical this is all beautiful terminologies in architecture be in this realm of creativity be in this fantastic dreams go to the queen's chambers talk to yourself keep a distance from yourself witness yourself and get into this go and dig this old graveyards and those mummies 15 centuries maybe 25 centuries 50 centuries maybe you'll find something like this classical neo classical wow this is what this uh, ivan evozovsky is painting they are too divine or this gaudi timeless so this visual feast is something phenomenal don't miss on this you can create this i think this is what we have to really look at okay so then there are variations different rebirths different reactions different times so all this visual array of rebirths is to remind myself through this monologue oh which which one i want to eat today such a great palate at my disposal what food i want to eat this or neo classical or classical or rembrandt or palladio or vinci or braque or this or this i don't want to do this this is what marcel den camp has said he wants to renounce everything look at the world as a great canvas of vandalism vandalize everything that is established maybe that's a rebirth giving life to a wonderful music theater films drama literature and why not architecture it will vandalism is a trigger okay one is never afraid of the unknown like i told you but one is afraid of the known which is coming to an end i think this is this really bothers me too much when two great people great minds what is common between the 8th century and the 15th century michelangelo on one hand and this great caves of elora what is this is 8th century kailash caves uh, elora caves and on the left hand side is 15 in this principle of seeing the angel in a raw stone was their 15th century and this was there far before 700 years before that how can this happen are they done by the same artist or they done by the same divinity which is eternal which is eternal to eternity i think that's what is the message today and that's what i want to uh so dear friends this eternity to eternity is a journey this voyage of design architecture is a unending voyage births and births oh sorry rebirths and rebirths so no wonder this will happen this is not amazing anymore this will happen this will happen this is all normal what is strange in it staying to yourself for 47 is strange waiting for that vaccine is strange what is strange or be reborn renounce everything what you have done 47 days before and be reborn in a new avatar is strange choice is yours you have this golden opportunity no one is going to question 
Oh, here, I'm not, I'm not recognizing you. Who the hell are you? I haven't met you before. Oh, yeah, I'm reborn. You will not recognize me. We have been encountered, engulfed, surrounded with these beautiful forms of rebirths. Whether it is Vara Avatar, Masya Avatar, Kurma Avatar, whatever Avatar you want to take. So these are all different Avatars. And these Avatars is our religion. You go to a temple and pray that God give me these Avatars. Give me a new form. Give me a new orbit. I want to be reborn. Okay? So do you see this wonderful connection? I am so excited to meet all of you in your new avatars. I am sure you divine community is going to come out with a great deal of new form. And why not? Like vandalism, Itore success, Memphis movement. He says, no, I don't believe. He comes to Mumbai, sees this UDP restaurant furniture and designs this new movement. One of the reasons for his movements, not though not the sole reason. Look at his departure from his earlier life. Look at his fearlessness to be repo. Oh, what will people call me? Oh, I am known to be like this. Oh my God, you are dead. You are no more there. Now you are reborn. Don't be scared. Come in your new avatar. No one is going to ask you. Okay? So architects are often inspired to come up in fresh ideas during such moments when if you want to call, there is nothing to do. Okay? And these moments are these moments. Timeless moments. So this Art Noah has that out of that nothingness state of mind has given this. He is beyond form. He is a way of thought. He appears on bookshelves. He appears on cobblestones. He appears in the air. He appears in the lampshade. Beyond architecture. Please think beyond architecture. Go back to nature and do like this. Okay? So this is Gaudi's rebirth. Maybe if I want to use this as a metaphor or an adjective. This is rebirth. New Avatara. Why not? This is a rebirth. So in, while we are seeing all this Amidst this turmoil, unrest, economical danger of world war, this great visionary also was reborn. He thought post-world war, economic crisis, social crisis, social crisis and political crisis, the world war. So let's redesign, be reborn. So this movement was reborn with spiritual meaning started obviously by Walter Gropius and then continued by Miss Van der Rohe. So Bauhaus was inspired by none other than Frank Lloyd Wright who believed buildings are children of sun and earth. Again, dear friends, he is also going to divinity. So what this group of visionaries did? So they called fine arts, painting, textile, metal, theater. They called everybody. So when I say architectural curriculum needs to be redesigned, I think we will have to redesign. We will have to call artisans, metal men, people who deal with textile as our faculty members. May it be Paul Klee. Kandinsky or Hittins, whosoever it may be. 
So they're all experts from different parts of the world. And imagine the visual, visual existence, Macintosh, Wagner, Frey Otto, Wright himself, Behrens, Marcel Brewer, Richard Neutra, Sarinen, and his son Sarinen. Then buildings like Savoy, Unit Habitation, and, and, and Chandigarh. So this is the visual world, and these are the people reborn. So I think there are some elements which are permanent. Like that uh, beehive, which I showed you, or the caves, or the Bauhaus movement, or the classical paintings, or Michelangelo, or Elora caves, all this Paul Klee, all Paul Klee says, a line, a drawing is simply a line going for a walk. And a, and a drawing is a line going for a walk. And a line is a dot going for a walk. What a wonderful point of view. So Bauhaus curriculum was clay, stone, wood, metal, glass, everything brought together, colors, preliminary courses, and obviously this permanence and divinity, which results timelessness. So when we see our cities nowadays completely deserted, so this great literary work also says, without people, what would this built environment mean? It will mean nothing. So people are cities, cities are people. That's extremely important. And I think that's the reason Master has told us long back, architecture has lost its way. We must start from zero again. So let's do it. Let's start from zero again. Okay? So he did it. Corbusier before birth and Corbusier after rebirth in the same given life. Corbusier like Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi or like Einstein or like Ravindranath Tagore was reborn severally without any fear. And that's why these great people are great. He reconnected Eisenstein, filmmaker, Salvador Dali, with his great piece of architecture. No wonder he was a master. Bauhaus on one side, 20th century, and 11th century in India, same principles were told. Now, please tell me this comparison, similar to Michelangelo and Kailash uh, Caves, Elora Caves, isn't it similar? Again, I'm pointing out to you, please remember, eternal to eternity, this voyage, irrespective of catastrophes, no catastrophes are going to hinder this journey. 11th century on left side, it tells the characteristics of an architect. 20th century, this tells how an architect should be. Both schools of thought, 9th centuries apart, what is common? I think that divinity is common. The form, the avatara is different. Okay? So please remember this. Or else what will happen? If this planet decides to terminate your agreement, it would be difficult. Okay? So please remember this. But in order to do this, where would this courage come? A student is more fearless than a professional architect. Professional architect feels, oh, sorry, that's my style. That's my philosophy. How can I change that now after 40 years? Student would not say that. So please confess 
today through this 47 days or next 47 days take this oath oh i'm going to be in a state of a student and this country obviously so many things to learn okay so many things to so many things to learn from japanese people kenzo tange korbuzie i am pai frank lloyd right philip johnson what is common in these people they have seen world war 1 they have seen pandemic they have seen world war 2 they have they are responsible for modern architecture so this is a great hint so please 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 learn from this and this is what we will have to address after this catastrophe as a responsible creative people please do not forget that cities have soul and that soul can be reestablished with the help of visual people planners architects creative community so creative community must be part and parcel of infrastructure making of nation building we are not please remember council of architecture indian institute of architecture all institutes let's reorient ourselves let's mutate ourselves let's be reborn hold our hands firmly and be part of the mainstream because the soul of cities only you and me knows nobody else will know we must be part of that core team okay so this is not the first time world is watching pandemic and the world will be re imagined renasa has come severely before so it all depends on what how much dependent we are on the visual world okay so don't be too much dependent on virtual world do something a lot of what will happen in architecture henceforth a lot of touchless technology will come doors are already touchless a lot of finishings and furnishings would be anti virus a lot of adaptive reuse will come in force so this definition of typology will be reborn schools will be seen as hospitals hospitals will be seen as hotels hotels will be seen as labs labs will be seen as resorts resorts will be seen as schools you will have to anticipate sudden abrupt standard conditions on airport lobbies in hospitals in theaters so on and so forth and they will have to be adopted as yoga rooms lecture rooms gymnasiums don't be surprised okay but having said this there are few exceptions like concerts and sports have their own magic in virtual non virtual world so they will remain okay so that's very important apartments will be redefined open plans will be questioned they would be segregated plans as a part of urban planning lot of farming agriculture will come in city planning because agriculture cannot be distanced from urban zones it has to be hand in hand with urban fabric so you will not be surprised if you see large farm lands in their new avatar in the heart of new york in the heart of mumbai city that is the need of the hour self sufficient power generating architecture would be mandatory water storage and purification houses would be workplaces they would be your offices mass industry would remain as mass industry but assorted and segregated okay so passages 
so far air city or other uh, statutory body says 30%, 33%. No, they would be more. Or creative community wants to give some other option to that if the areas are increasing. But they would be certainly more than 30%. Okay, so I'll come to my end of my presentation in one or two slides. What are these? Is it a red parabola? Is it a curve? Is it a curve of uh, a creative spike? Is it a curve of a disease? Or is it a curve of this glittering necklace full of hiatus, unrest, and interruptions? This is nothing but our plan of Agenda Caves. This is a wonderful necklace. And this small moment that we are all experiencing is a small bead. It is not a pendant. It is one of the beads of this necklace. So don't get shattered. So maybe you are part of such wonderful necklace. Take distance from yourself. Take a bird's eye view and watch this parabola. You may find a different picture. This great work of architecture and art with a fusion, unique work, is a work of determination. Please be determined. Do not get frustrated. This is a consolidated and clear vision which lasted from 2nd century BC till 6th century, 800 years. This is a monument which was born and reborn and reborn and reborn in one lifetime. So you will be reborn severally. Don't be scared. Our legacy and our belief is a perception of a cyclic time. So you are born with a cyclic time. So don't be scared. Okay? Whether it is Lord Buddha who called it a paradise or whether it is resurrection or it is a sansara or it is a reincarnation whatever it may be you are experiencing a minuscule demonstration of that. So read a book called Time Reborn by Liz Mullen who will give you a scientific perspective of reborn, time reborn also. Okay, so perception of the time needs to revisit, to see beyond in order to verify what finally remains. I am extremely hopeful, my dear friends. I am hopeful about what? The craft after this catastrophe will be reinstated. Architectural institutes and professionals will invite them with a great deal of respect. Users and investors will take a longer pause before building mass housings. A lot of lot could be done as regards to meaningful neighborhoods. And uh, professional community will become part of coordination building and they will renounce their sectarian perspective and, and contribute in search of soul. So this is what you see in our temples. So a face of one animal with a forehead of other, ears of third, changing into body of some fourth animal, continuous transformation is the ultimate truth of life. This is Indian philosophy. Galloping, changing, swirling in inanimate continuous variations. Variations, bizarre variations. The world of Vyalas is world of possibilities. Variations, mutations, remembering and reminding us ours is not the only world. There is other world too, world of possibilities. So dear friends, thanks a lot once again. 
See you in your new avatara. After the doors are open. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for the mesmerizing presentation as always. I now hand over the mic to Snehil to continue with the question answer session. We have few questions in the YouTube. Snehil. Sir is not there. Please pause for a moment. Sir has got disconnected. He is connecting back. We have sir back now. Okay. Uh -huh. Good evening, sir. Sir? Yeah. sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. Yeah. Sir, I'll start with the questions. Um, yeah, it was our. It was audible the whole presentation. Yes, sir. It was very clear. Yeah. Okay. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, there's a question from Sudhir Dikkar. He yeah. he's asking, uh, please could you explain more on living in illusions? See, living in illusions is uh, uh, living in a fiction. Unless you uh, want to call it an illusion or a story of this voyage or a uh, or 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 a, or of or a fiction you cannot build civilization like this okay so illusions are very important to create realities yeah can you hear that yes sir we could, we could. yeah yeah I'm waiting for a few more questions okay So we are receiving a lot of thank you, and uh, yes. So, uh, yeah, usually, sir. Everybody is very happy for this uh, new turn that you have showed everyone, new direction. Yeah, I think. Uh...